Okay, so uh, today we're going to discuss all about the blood smear preparation. And we're going to discuss later on as well here the hematopoiesis. So we start here with the blood smear preparation. Okay, so for your blood smear preparation, we have here different sources of the blood wherein we can use this one for uh, doing our blood film or blood smear preparation. The first one, we have here the anticoagulant, uh, anticoagulated blood. So, the ideal na anticoagulant here for the blood film or blood smear preparation would be the blood collected from your ETA. So, basically, the, that one is your tri-potassium ETA because that one is your, um, the one recommended here by, or this is the liquid na tri-potassium ETA. Okay, so, ideally, we, we can use here the blood collected from your ETA for your blood smear preparation, provided that you try to prepare your blood film or blood smear within 2 to 3 hours of collection process. Uh, because of course here, if you have here more than that uh, 2 to 3 hours, most likely they will have some alteration in the morphology of your blood cells. So, it might be, pag magkaroon ng alteration kasi, it might be interpreted here as either abnormal na cells, when you are having that morphology evaluation. So, to preserve the morphology better of the cells here, then you are required that you prepare your blood smear within two hours, within two to three hours of your blood collection process with your ETA. Okay, we have here several advantages of the blood collected in your ETA. Since your blood collected from your ETA contains an anticoagulant, so... Number one, you're able to prepare here several smears since that one is not a clotted blood. So you can have your trial and error for that. Another one, you can prepare that one later, later time. On the later time, because again, this one uh, is already on, your blood is not clotted. And then another one, uh, it could also prevent their platelet clumping. Okay, however, here we could have here the instances where the blood collected in the ETA would have the following disadvantages. The first one, we have here your platelet satellitism or the platelet satellitosis. So when we speak about the platelet satellitism or the platelet satellitosis, so it characterized here by your platelet try to form a satellite or try to surround your PMN or your poly neutrophil, polymorphonuclear neutrophil. So it would look like this. Another one, we have here your ETA-induced platelet clamping. So the platelet, the ETA-induced platelet clamping will be characterized by this one. Okay, so where your platelets were able to form a clamp here. So if you have that platelet satellitism or platelet uh, clamping, um, when you try to Analyze here your, uh, or to perform here the CBC with your heme analyzer, the automated heme analyzer. Um, by the way, your automated heme analyzer able to identify the blood cells in your body based on the particle size. So, kung ito, like for example, kung ito, kung maliliit na particles would be identified as your platelets, and your WBC will be identified here as having that bigger na particle size. Okay, when you have here the platelet satellitism, okay, so your platelet would be identified here as your WBC because they're able to form here a satellite uh, within your neutrophil. And the same through with your platelet clamping. So since they form here a bigger na particle size, so hindi siya mapapagkamalan ni platelet ni uh, heme analyzer natin as your platelets but rather it will be interpreted as other cell in your body so the consequence since na hindi sila makilala as your platelets is because here na mababa uh, it's because here na wala siya nakikita na maliliit na particle size because they already assume here like this one WBC or this one could also be Identify here as WBC because of the clamp we're able to form here a bigger particle size. And therefore, ma no magiging count ng platelet natin. So, bababang platelet count that become here your pseudo thrombocytopenia. 
On the other hand, since akala ni uh, Himalayzer, madami ang ating WBC, but actually those are mga platelets mo na nag-form ng clump or bigger structure. So, what you have here, increase ang WBC count that become your pseudo-leucocytosis. Um, anyway, if you able to perform here your platelet count with your manual method or your indirect like uh, blood smear identification, so nasa slide ka lang pagbibilang ng platelets, this one, okay, if you encounter this one, each of that na maliliit, those are your platelets, you need to count individually as platelets. Dapat, this one is isang bilang, isa, 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 isa. The same through with your platelet clamps. You need to count them individually. Okay, so for the remedy here, if the machine would try to flag na may error, like sobrang taas ng platelets, sobrang, ay, sobrang baba ng platelet count, sobrang taas ng WBC, then you need to recheck. You can, uh, eventually, you can perform the manual method for checking that one, so by preparing a smear, and then try to identify that one under the microscope for the possible na satellitism and plated clamping. Or another option here, so pag nakita mo na may ganong uh, situation, then you need to recollect your blood, but this time you put it one with your sodium citrate instead of the ETA. And then whatever the result of your uh, machine here with your WBC count and a platelet count, you need to multiply by 1.1 to have the correction for the clamp. To have the correction for your count for both your WBC and your platelets. Okay, then again, we have here your sodium citrate. So we have this is your light blue. So basically, this one is used for coagulation studies. So this includes your prothrombin time and your activated partial thromboplastin time. So we have here the inversion is 3 to 4 with a buffered citrate would have a concentration of 3.2% or 0 0.109 molar. So we have here your the blue light, the light blue here na top would have here 1 is 9 na anticoagulant blood ratio. Okay, another source of the blood here for the, your blood smear preparation, we have here your anticoagulant free blood. So, anticoagulant-free blood, okay, it's the blood collected here to your skin puncture or your finger prick puncture. Okay, so, we consider this one as the best for your morphology evaluation because of little um, contamination. Okay, so, we have that one advantage, yes. So, you could have here prepared your blood film at the uh, patient's bedside. So, pag pumunta ka sa patient, then collect the blood, immediately you're able to make a film upon collection process. Advantage niyan, uh, less error with the patient identification. Okay, so unlike, di ba, pa nag-collect ka ng blood sa ETA, dadalhin pa sa laboratory, doon ka palang gagawa ng film, and would have a tendency na baka ang blood na yon na hindi galing sa patient. But this one, since you try to collect it at the patient's bedside, so automatic, after making a film, you try to label that one, so less chance of um, error in the patient identification. Another one, artifacts may be prevented, so making this one as, again, this is less, ano siya, less prone to uh, contamination, and therefore making this one as an ideal for your morphology evaluation. Disadvantage, since na you are only collecting a limited blood because this one is a skin puncture, so therefore, limited film could only be make could be made here at the bed at the patient's bedside. So another one you could also have here the platelet clamping, especially pag hindi ganon ka free flowing blood when you're collecting the the blood sample on the finger of the patient, like nahirapan ka ko wani ng blood ng patient, so most likely pipiga ka na piga. Then uh, upon transferring. Your blood collector from your capillary tube, baka nag-clat na siya because of that. And therefore, it might induce your platelet clamping with your blood film under the microscope. Okay, so we have here <clears throat> several methods here for your blood smear preparation. You could have the manual method or you could also have the automated. We have automated instrument which try to uh, make a film of that. 
So we have here the wedge. Wedge here is with the use of two na slides. One is your uh, spreader slide. Another one is your film slide. So the spreader slide is your pusher slide. So that's the use here to push or to spread your drop of the blood in order for you to make here your blood film. And we have also here your film slide. So kung saan man ilagay ang drop ng blood, it becomes your film slide. Another method we have here, the Beckhams. The Beckhams method is make use of isang cover slip and isang cover, isang cover slip at isang glass slide. Ehrlich, on the other hand, gumawa ng dalawang, I mean, gumamit ng dalawang cover slip. But uh, in the laboratory, routinely we are using the wedge. Automated instrument here for your blood film preparation. An example for that, we have the spinner na instrument. So, since automated siya, so it would have your homogeneous na blood film preparation. So, consistent siya. Hindi siya trial and error, unlike sa atin, di ba? So, okay, try and try and try lang tayo palagi to make a, a perfect film. Sa kanya is almost perfect always. And another one is few or a few uh, distorted or broken cells here could be produced. Again, um, pag distorted or broken cells here, uh, if you try to examine those one under the microscope, baka mapagkama lang mong mga abnormal cells and of course it will alter your interpretation and the reporting. And that's being prevented if you have this automated na uh, blood smear preparation. Okay, so we have also here the ideal na angle here when you are making a smear. So, uh, so, approximately, we have your 30 to 45 degrees. In some reference, you could have your 33 to 45 degrees. Okay, then we have your consideration when you are making your film or smear. The first one, we have here the drop of the blood. Approximately, the drop of the blood here should have occupy or should have at least 2 to 3 millimeter in diameter. Okay, so we have that. If you have a very thick na or too large the drop of the blood, what you produce for that would be a long and thick na smear. For too small na mana drop of the blood, what you produce here would eventually be a short and thin na smear. Okay, then we have here the speed of the spreader. So when you are making a film, so it should be smooth and um, not too slow and not too fast. Um, too slow here would result to your abnormal WBC distribution within your film. What do you mean by that? Pag sinabing abnormal, WBC distribution, okay, so in one, in some part of your film, manaka, may mga dito, okay, nag-concentrate ka dito na WBC, other part dito, dito na area, sa area walang WBC, the other one, walang WBC. That's poor distribution of your WBC. You should have unequal distribution or even distribution of your WBC throughout the entire film dapat. That's why dapat hindi siya ganun ka-slow or hindi ganun ka-fast naman ang ating blood film preparation. Sobrang slow kasi, di ba? Magkakaroon din magiging smooth ang transition ng ating blood film for that. Another consideration would be the hematocrit of the patient. Hematocrit of the patient represent here the percentage of your PRBC compared with the total volume of your blood. Ang ganito ang blood mo, so we have here your PRBC, we have your plasma, and whatever the percentage of your PRBC that represent your hematocrit. So parang indirectly, we refer your hematocrit here to your degree of your anemia then. But hindi siya ganun kam, actually, by uh, technicality, hindi measurement ang hematocrit natin as with your anemia. We are using hemoglobin level for us then to classify someone to have anemia. But then again, parang pang, ano lang, pang, pang universal language lang na pag wala ka masyadong PRPC or RBC, so anemic ang patient. So that's your hematocrit. As a percentage of your PRPC lang siya. Okay, so increase hematocrit. Kailan nag-increase ang hematocrit ng patient natin? Pag sinabing increase hematocrit, dumadami ang uh, PRBC, kumukonte ang water. So, mito si the patient is dehydrated. Pag dehydrated ang patient, like in the case of your diarrhea, vomiting, or even a case of dengue, nagiging hemoconcentrated. Kasi nabing hemoconcentrated, dumadami 
ang PRBC or the the form element na components or the portion of the blood compared with the water content. Okay, so we have also the term na polycythemia vera. Okay, we have also here your polycythemia vera is characterized by an increase in your RBC count, in your hematocrit. So in the case of that, so the sur increase does your increase hematocrit. So, since, kung sinabing increase hematocrit, sobrang lapot ng blood ni patient, what would be the necessary adjustment at with, as with our blood film preparation? Since sobrang lapot ng blood ni patient, because again, the patient would have a high hematocrit concentration, all you need to do is to lower the angle. Pag i-lower mo ang angle natin, okay, pag ganito, pag i-lower mo yung angle ng film natin, sorry, Pag i-lower mo yung angle ng film natin, pag push mo siya, what you produce here would be a long and thin na film. Okay, so therefore, it will allow you to have a better morphology evaluation because they are not overlapping. And what you produce here, hindi siya ganun ka-thick na film. Okay, so again, if you have increased hematocrit, lower the angle, and what you produce here would be a a thin na film, but that one is much longer na film. Kasi pag ano, ano gaman na mangyari dito pag tinaasan mo pa ang angle? Pag tinaasan mo pa ang angle, mas lalo siya magiging thick and short na film. And uh, eventually, nag-overlap, nagkakaroon ng overlapping ang cells natin. What will be the problem pag nagkakaroon ng overlapping ng cells natin? Like when you are, uh, when you are identifying here the different cells, or like when you are uh, doing your, for example, manual na platelet count or even your differential count, pag nag-overlap sila, you could not clearly identify the cells. Like, in the case of the platelets, remember the platelets, very small ang platelet natin. Kung nag-overlap ang cells natin, like tinakpan siya ng madaming RBC, hindi mo na makikita ang platelets. The same through with your WBC, kasi of course you could not, identify if that one, that kind of WBC, since your cells are overlapping because you have a very thick na film. That's why you need to make necessary adjustment with that if you have an increased hematocrit concentration, just need to lower the angle in order for you to produce here a longer and thin na film. On the other hand, decrease hematocrit. So, pag sinabing decrease hematocrit, so konti lang PRBC, means say anemic ang patient. So, since sobrang Malab now ang blood ni patient. All we need to do here as necessary adjustment with the angle of your smear is try to increase increase the angle of the film. That would create here a blood film na medyo short and thick. So medyo kakapala natin ang film natin kasi sobrang lab now ng blood ni patient. Pag sobrang kasing thin ang film natin, wala ka masyado makikita ng mga blood cells. And the same time, ang distribution ng mga blood cells mo, hindi ganun kaganda. And of course, that eventually affects your reporting and the identification of your cells. So, that's clear for this one. Again, pag thick ang film. Another thing here is pag sobrang, ganito, ganito siya, increase hematocrit or malaki ang drop ng blood natin. Pareho lang sila. Increase hematocrit or malaki ang drop ng blood, lower the angle. Ito naman, pag mababa ang hematocrit, sobrang konti ng drop ng blood mo, then you try to increase your angle. In order for you to at least have uh, more or less okay na blood film after doing that one. Okay, then we have here the characteristics of your ideal blood smear or ideal blood film. So the first one, you should have a gradual transition from thick to thin. Okay, you start here, then... Okay, so most likely, gradual transition, so dapat you start here on this area, thicker area, and should have a gradual transition to thin area. Hindi pwedeng thick, tapos may thin, thick, thin, something like that. When you are doing your um, differential count for identification of your different WBC, classifying them to different WBC, you start with the thin area on the feathery edge. So dapat may gradual transition from thick to thin, you start with a thin area in order for you to better scrutinize 
the morphology of your uh, different cells here, cellular cells, in order for you to identify them correctly. The other one, your films should occupy here approximately two-thirds to three-fourths of the film slide. Again, that's if you have here a normal na blood, like normal na drop ng blood, hindi siya ganun kalaki, hindi siya ganun kaliit. If you are following the 2 to 3 millimeter diameter. But then again, pag nag-adjust tayo, we could not achieve the 2 third or 3 fourth uh, length of your film because you are adjusting it. Like again, pag matas yung matoplate or mababa. But ideally, dapat your blood film should occupy here approximately 3 fourth of the entire um, 3 fourth of the entire film slide na, uh, na, na, na area. Another one, you should have here the finger shape, the thumb shape, or you should have the bullet shape. Ang end part niya dapat, okay, ganyan. So, thumb shape, finger shape, or bullet shape. So, you should have here without irregularities, without holes or streaks, without scratches. Okay, so, most likely holes here because of your oil, di ba? So, dapat, um... You should at least use here new slide, hindi yung mga na-wash na, na slide. Because most likely, pag na-wash na, na slide, may oil na yan. And that might, that would eventually be responsible here for your producing holes and streaks or irregularities in your blood film preparation. Another one should have here the feathery edge. And you should pick up the entire drop of the blood. Again, kung dito ang drop ng blood, kunin mo yung lahat para magkaroon ka ng even na uh, distribution ng blood. Kasi pag hindi mo na pick up lahat ng drop ng blood, so ano mangyayari? So, ganito lang yung makuha mo. ba? For example, okay, so ito lang, hindi mo na pick up lahat, so ganyan na lang yung makuha mo. You're not able to have your okay, the required na width ng film natin. So, pag na-pick up tayo ng blood natin, drop of the blood with your spreader slide, wait muna na pumunta lahat dito sa edge ng ating uh, spreader slide before you try to spread your blood. Another thing of by your ideal blood film here, you try to hold that one, the film against, uh, for example, against the light, you're able to see a rainbow on that. 